Alrighty, y'all, I'm going to need you to accept my apology for my absence and my bum appearance. Uh, I fell down wicked hard today, like cracked my elbow, went, got x-rays done. It's all okay. Your boy's going to live. But what I have for you is a complete breakdown in a TLDR for the insanely massive PTR patch notes that we got. And since you're here right now, that means that you only care about one thing, and that's the necromancer. And let me just say to you, if you haven't sat down and read through these... There's a lot to go over, but what I want to very specifically focus on is the changes to the class itself. This can include the new unique items, new aspects, minion changes, etc. And just like every season now, I don't know when I decided I was going to do this, but I took a lot of notes and I have a lot of opinions about all of the different changes that are in the PTR notes. Not only that, I have a summary of all of the changes, whether or not they are a nerf or a buff to your particularly favorite class for the Necromancer. And I even went further above and beyond and I wrote down a TLDR list for people who just wanna get that like mile high basic understanding of what you need to know walking into the PTR. I had the audacity of drawing up a change to the tier list and I have a really, really big disclaimer to put at the beginning of this part but that'll be in just a minute but as always if you just wanted to look at the changes that were relevant to the individual builds and you don't like looking at the giant table i also broke them down by those builds so you can go find them immediately as always use the timestamps down below skip around to the particular thing that you want i will not be offended i promise if all you care is about minions just jump to that part etc but let's go ahead and get into it i'm gonna go ahead and start off with the tldr for people who just want to get again that like high level, like 10,000 feet in the sky, understanding of what you should walk away with as a general feel for what to look for in the PTR. Evan Piercer is a new unique amulet that says that whenever you cast Blight, it's going to shoot four smaller projectiles, which pierce, which apply a shadow damage over time effect. Now, right now, there is only one effect that the Necromancer has that actually applies shadow damage over time to an individual target, and that is Ultimate Shadow from Bone Storm, whereas every other effect that we have has damage over time in an area of effect. So this will be our second opportunity to be able to apply a unique damage over time effect to a target, meaning that this could also stack along with maximum blighted corpse explosions and maximum blight pools underneath targets. And the fact that it's applying piercing projectiles doing shadow damage over time, it's going to vastly increase like the application of shadow blight, triggering blighted, as well as being able to trigger the massive amount of passive effects like crippling darkness, which does shadow damage instances with a lucky hit related to blight. And since this amulet will be triggered from blight, the projectiles that come from it should trigger lucky hit like blight does. So this amulet in general should be on your radar for something that's going to be tested along the majority of builds. Turns out that Blight applying 20% increased damage to targets affected by it is really good. You can use this on Infinimist, Sever, Blight, Minion builds as well. So I'm expecting Ebon Piercer to not only be very good for Blight builds in general, but across the spectrum of Darkness and Minion builds as an activator for various systems. Crewers Embrace, sadly, is not nearly as hype, although I do think a lot of people are going to overhype it, misunderstanding what it brings to the Blood Surge build. Crew Wars Embrace, which are unique gloves, remember Blood Surge is already an incredibly aspect hungry build and really doesn't have gear slots to spare, says that Blood Surge now consumes corpses, it's going to deal additional damage per target drained and additional damage per corpse consumed because whenever it consumes a corpse it's going to make a mini nova. So this is going to be very similar to Death Speaker's Amulet which makes a mini nova on top of all of your minions. Uh, most notably Death Speaker's was only ever really good for triggering lucky hit for Mendel and Mendel no longer works off of lucky hit that's another point that we'll get to a little bit later on but for crewers here i think the biggest issue that i see with the item is that blood surge already does amazing aoe damage and what this does is forces you to consume corpses without using corpse explosion which is a pretty cool little effect you get to use a corpse consumption package without having corpse explosion on your skill bar but it's going to increase your ability to do aoe damage something blood surge already excels at at a hyper accelerative rate. Uh, on top of that, how are you expected to generate a ton of corpses on top of a single target to actually get a benefit out of this? I don't know what these gloves are supposed to accomplish other than to be very cool looking, very fun to play with, 
make speed farming super fast, and generally make the build better at what it already does without addressing any of the things that it's bad at. And considering we're getting even more situations where we're going to be fighting super strong bosses, which are one-on-one -on -one fights, I think that Blood Surge is really going to have to focus on it doing single target damage as opposed to ramping up its AoE damage, which again, it's already the king of doing. Thorns minions. Uh, to understand this, you just have to have a very quick understanding with the fact that minions are now going to inherit 100% of our stats, and thorn minions was already a thing that you could do, and that's when they only inherited 30% of your thorns. Now, there were stats that would increase how much of your thorns they would inherit, and the bone golem most notably inherits a huge amount of thorns from you, as well as the defender skeletons. But now that they inherit 100% of your stats, Thorn Minions is finally going to scale at a rate where it's probably going to be competitive for clearer speed in comparison to other builds that were just strictly better before. Now, I don't think that Thorn Minions is somehow going to like be the ultimate meta, but I do think it's going to be the casual meta insofar as that everybody is going to want to do it. It's going to be effective and it's going to work for like a really decent amount of the end game progression until you're trying to push into high tier pit runs where monsters are now so much higher level than you that the inability of thorns to like legitimately scale since the necromancer doesn't have any thorns scaling mechanisms similar to the barbarian who just has like increase your thorns damage by a bajillion damage according to your berserking damage or whatever we just don't have those tools i assume that there will be some in tempering options for increasing on our gear but until we see that i'm not going to overhype this for you Thorns is absolutely going to be the flavor of the month. Everybody's going to do it super easy way to progress into the end game. And then I think it's probably going to stall out in the late end game where more optimized and uh, more consistent build options are going to outshine it. Pure minions. On top of the fact that the minions are going to inherit 100% of your base stats, minions also gained an incredible amount of multipliers and all of the multipliers that they previously only got 30% of, they're going to get 100% of. Now, we are going to have to test a lot of things because there are a lot of stats that say not only only you but your minions gain stats hardened bones says that they gain 20 percent dr and you get 20 percent dr but if they get 100 percent of your stats that means that they get 40 percent dr inspiring leader has been changed so that it gives you crit chance and it gives your minions crit chance does this just mean at max ranks my minions gain 30 percent crit chance and i only gain 12 percent it's really hard to say unless there is unique logic which stops these double dip or these some for me some for you effects in the game to literally stop them from being read in the reverse, I can't see a reason why this wouldn't be the case. I think this says minions gain 30% crit chance. Now, it's going to be a little bit hard to test, but we're going to get there. Don't worry about it. What that basically means is that pure minions fully investing in the necromancers damage multipliers, which your minions now gain 100% of, going with the cult leader paragon board, as well as increasing your damage through unyielding commander and army of the dead, is going to be a really, really good build. How good is it going to be? I always have my reservations. They have increased the AI of the actual skeleton warriors so that they, they can engage combat. They've given us a lot of tools for scaling their damage. They've made the golem significantly better. They've given them a huge array of different abilities to be able to consistently trigger huge amounts of critical strike damage, etc. All of that sounds insanely good until you remember the fact that minions did no damage before and now they are going to do competent damage and what this is really going to come down to is actually seeing what it looks like when your minions do real damage but you cannot direct them to attack specific monsters at the end of the day i think it's just going to be slower than the majority of other meta builds unless these damage scalers are like so bananas wild that's impossible to determine just like how much they are going to overperform in comparison to what they did before so is this the season to finally play minions absolutely no question. Do you still need Ring of Mendel? No. And in fact, I actually don't think that it's going to be good on minions really at all. They made it so that it triggers once every sixth of their attacks, meaning you cannot like preload trigger it for them, but you also don't need lucky hit to trigger it. So it opens up a lot of different ways of building minions at the TLDR of this TLDR is that pure minions is absolutely going to be a smashing build. I think it's realistically going to end up somewhere around the high end of a tier for necromancers and i think that the fact that minions like can't be directed to actually attack things that you want is ultimately what's going to keep it out of the s tier on top of the fact that until we see what's in the season and what stats look like i don't currently know how you expect to survive 
when you do not use uh, sources of infinite barrier like bone storm because in season three we can use the seneschal for barrier and even then sometimes you're getting capped when the barrier happens to drop off and it hasn't been refreshed yet but that doesn't mean that we need to be doom and gloom it doesn't mean that i'm trying to take a crap on it it's just i'm not going to overhype you because i don't see any reasons to get overhyped until we know what stats look like in the game. Shadow Minions, much shorter breakdown of how I feel about this. I think that Shadow Minions are kind of in an interesting place where they're going to be worth more as utility options and for triggering various systems rather than arguably the better version of pure minions because you were actually scaling your own damage and they were just kind of standing around. While you can scale their damage, you absolutely want to build into Klan's Edict, you absolutely want to build into Cult Leader, and to be able to get the most out of both of these things, you also probably want Army of the Dead, as well as Unyielding Commander. And if you're fully building into their damage, all of those systems that I just said do not actually gain the Necromancer any damage. And Shadow Summoner was always able to kind of scale its own damage via Blighted and Shadow Blight. And because of that, you have to make this decision. Like, am I just using Shadow Skills to supplement them? Or am I using them to supplement my Shadow Skills? All in all, I think that Shadow Minions is ultimately going to be weaker than Pure Minions. And is probably going to settle into this middle ground where, like, yes, you can actually go faster on the Necro themselves. But your burst damage potential or your boss killing speed isn't going to be as high as Pure Minions is. And last but not least the concept of minions for utility and leveling. Here's the funniest or most interesting part about all these changes. I think every build is a minions build now. You know how every build was a corpse explosion build for a while, and then every build was a blood mist build for a while, and then every build is just decrepified corpse tendrils bone storm? I now believe that you can quite literally fit minions into every single build as opposed to automatically sacrificing them. Considering the fact that they took both of the utility aspects and in Occult Dominion made it so that it increases your mages and your skeleton warriors as opposed to needing two aspects, you can very easily fit this onto a helmet slot since you can put a utility aspect there and basically just run plus four minions effectively for free without sacrificing anything from major builds, at least into the late end game when you're looking to use some more unique items that would take up those item slots. But what this basically means is that not only is it just going to be amazing for leveling, right? Minions were already really good as utility for leveling, and now they are just strictly better. They do more damage, they apply more vulnerable, they make more essence, etc. for you. But on top of that, you can just fit them into your builds more easily since they're going to get 100% of your survivability stats. They're going to scale with your damage scalers, and that just means that they're going to be relevant for longer. I wouldn't be surprised if every single build basically has a minions variant to it that says like, hey, do you want to use minions on this build? Here's the best way to do it. It may not be better than this, but it gets you this bonus. It may not be as powerful as this, but it gets this quality of life aspect to it. So in the future, do not be surprised if everybody is like, hey, this is how I build it, and this is how I build it with minions, in case you want to be a little freaky like that. Bone Spirit got a pretty massive change in that they made it so that it's considered a core skill. So similar to Bone Spear, uh, your Sever, your Blight, your Blood Lance, your Blood Surge, now Bone Spirit is also a core skill. The secondary part to this note is that we don't quite understand what other tags have been added to the Necromancer. We know that Army of the Dead now has Summoning as one of its tags, although we don't know anything in the game that really interacts with Summoning other than summoning skill damage, which is nothing. It's a very small additive damage source, both on your chest as well as on the Ring of Mendeln, and I think it's on the amulet as well. Don't quote me on that. But we at the very least know that Bone Spirit has gained the core skill tag. What this means is that at bare minimum, Imperfectly Balanced says that Bone Spirit does 15% more damage for free. You just got to put the four points into it, uh, which is something that you're already doing on the hybrid spear it as well. And on top of that, other things that trigger off of core skills. So Banish Lord's Talisman triggers off of core skills. The Cadaverous aspect says eating five corpses increases a core skills damage by 50%. That means that I believe the Bone Spirit Pipe Bomb Dream, where you use Corpse Explosion, Black River, Sacrilegious Soul. And now you get to use Cadaverous since it's going to trigger once every one second, eat five corpses, get you a 1.5 multiplier for Bone Spirit. Seems like pretty easy damage scaling there for a more continuous and fast paced play style that people were able to accomplish in Season 3 already. While there are absolutely some other benefits to this, meaning the Spear It hybrid between Bone Spear and Bone Spirit is already just strictly better considering you typically wanted core skill damage on your weapon if it's still in the game, and that only helped Spear's damage but not Spirit's damage. Now it helps both of them. There's definitely going to be other ways in which this is going to become more nuanced and more powerful, 
but bare minimum, Bone Spirit just gained new multipliers effectively for free, new ways to interact with Overpower via Banish Lord's Talisman, and then on top of that became a significantly better tool for the Spirit Hybrid, which was probably my favorite leveling build in Season 3, and while Blood Surge is going to absolutely blow everything away, keep in mind, Leveling on the Necromancer has never been sweeter than it is right now, and I think you could effectively run no skills, just toss some minions onto your skill bar and like corpse explosion and level faster than the majority of other classes. So look forward to Bone Spirit not only being more popular than it already was, but coming up with some really kooky like one shot, all like super mega ultra boss killing setups with all these wild, huge multipliers that you get to put on them. Darkness builds. Darkness builds in general, we're now just kind of talking about the archetypical builds here. So Infinimist, Sever, Blight, Shadow Surfer, some Corpse Explosion variants, etc. The Black River, Necromancer, etc. They haven't gained too much. They've gotten a lot of quality of life. So Blood Mist no longer slows you down. On top of that, Blood Soaked gives you 20% movement speed. So just Blood Soaked and Ghost Walker alone is getting you 45% movement speed. That means with movement speed on your boots and your amulet, if they're both still stats that you can get, you are at 100% capped movement speed without anything else. You don't even need a mobility aspect on the amulet. You can even mess around with using Metamorphosis if you really wanted to. But what we basically got was the ability to trade in minions for a couple different utility options there, being able to trigger Shadow Blight super easily, a very cool new unique item, interesting pair of boots that might see some play, and then almost certainly a bunch of changes to the aspects that are in the game, because we haven't seen all of them, but the most notable one is Damned. Damned used to say you had to cast Iron Maiden and Decrepify to get a 50% damage multiplier, and now it just says you deal 50% additional shadow damage against targets that have a curse on them. Bone builds, most notably Bone Spear, or I guess Super Mimi Bone Splinters Pain Gorgers basic skill. I don't think it's happening, but most notably for Bone Spear, we really haven't gained a ton. Again, the hybrid with Bone Spirit has gone strictly better. There are more options for being able to run skeletons, which is just kind of cool because the skirmishers say when you crit, they crit, and Bone Spear crits multiple times per cast against multiple targets. So you might be able to just like rapid fire out a huge amount of scalable crit damage from your skeletons uh, because you definitely don't need to sacrifice them for the crit chance because you will be able to reach 100% crit chance almost no question just based off the changes in our skill tree as well as the changes for gear and being able to masterwork and get greater affixes, etc. So I wouldn't be surprised if a Bone Spear Summoner build is actually very meta, especially early on, while we're still trying to generally figure out what's good. But other than that, Bone Spear doesn't really get too many new toys, and it's basically because it's been in a really good spot for a long time, and it's just like powerful enough to always be competitive, but not super overpowered, so it needs to get nerfed. So I understand why they didn't give it too many toys, but I would have been more excited if everything just kind of got new toys. But I assume that they believe that with the changes to minions, we're gonna be trying out a lot of stuff. And honestly, they're right. That's basically all I'm gonna be testing during the PTR. Blood builds. Here's the funny part. Blood builds were unintentionally nerfed in a bunch of different ways. Banish Lord's Talisman was nerfed. Tibalt's Will was nerfed, as well as Untimely Death was actually nerfed. Here's the wild part. Let's go ahead and look at Untimely Death here. So Untimely Death is probably an aspect you haven't used too often, but it says whenever you are overheal your maximum life, you would gain a bonus multiplier to overpower damage. So you'd be able to overheal your maximum life by 120%. And then you do an additional 1.6 damage whenever you overpower. And you definitely had enough time to overheal before your next overpower would roll through. They changed it so that it instead works for critical strikes. And we did the math. And there's effectively no real world way where you can overheal enough on every cast to get a larger total damage multiplier than you would have. Because you're going to reach 100% chance to crit. And that means that you would need to overheal 120% of your maximum life in between each attack to get the full multiplier on each crit that followed, as opposed to something like Blood Surge, where you would overpower once every six casts. So you would need to heal for 120% of your maximum life over five attacks. Now you got to do it over one attack, and there's just no way that you're going to accomplish that. Even if you were to overheal, I think, by 16% of your maximum life in between each attack, it still wouldn't overperform what it did previously. I get why they changed it on paper, because my first intuition was like, oh, this makes sense. Now that we're going to have 100% chance to crit, this should be strictly better. And then we sat down and really did the math. You can't overheal fast enough to make this worth it. 
they just made it worse and I don't know why. So what that basically means is that unless Crewer's Embrace is somehow insanely powerful for Blood Surge, other than the changes to be able to use minions better for utility, which again, Blood Builds don't really like minions because they can't overpower, so you can't scale their damage based off of how you scale your damage. But I think they just got unintentionally nerfed by trying to bring Barbarians more in line. And I really wish that the devs would just admit the fact that Barbarians having too many weapons is the problem. And it's not the items that they keep putting in the game that are really good for Necromancers and the systems like Overpower that keep getting nerfed because Barbarians do too much damage. Help me out here, devs. Just take away a weapon from the Barbarian. Just do it. Like, just pony up and pay the price. I know it's cool, but like, why don't we stop negatively impacting the rest of the game just because barbs exist? Okay, are you ready? No one knows what the tier lists are going to look like. Nobody knows. It's insane for me to even vaguely look at you through the camera here and try to pretend to tell you that I have any idea what the tier lists are going to look like. People are going to take their best guesses. People were nonstop asking me what tier things are now. No one knows. We're not even going to know at the end of the PTR because they're going to change things based off of our feedback in the PTR. That being said, what I want to try to highlight are builds and how much more relatively powerful I think that they have become. So what I have for you right now is the tier list, according to what we already had on max roll from season three. You'll notice that there are things with up arrows. That means how many tiers I expect it to jump up in the relative power scale of just the Necromancer. You'll see the under dash here, which is, again, in comparison, how much weaker I think it has become. If there's more up arrows, that means it has gone up multiple tiers. And then just because not everybody knows this off the top of their head, here are the current Necromancer builds as I see them. You notice that a couple of them have asterisks. These are indicating builds that aren't official, meaning builds that aren't currently on the website. Will they be on the website? Depends on if they're good in the PTR. And then obviously it'll take us some time to write them up because they'll be completely new guides. But all of that being said, Let's go through the three different tier lists that we currently use for max roll. I'll give a quick breakdown of them and I'll explain to you why I think these various builds are moving in the ways that they are. So the end game tier list has always been a bit of a dark horse because we are defining end game according to the developers and the developers consider end game to be when you get into world tier three and you start doing the open world content. So the best end game builds are builds that can do all of the content in the end game that isn't super specialized. So the Avatar of Zero was super specialized. The Gauntlet is super specialized. Something that is an S tier build may be terrible in the Gauntlet because the Gauntlet is a very specific thing built to do a particular thing. But end game builds are typically gonna be able to farm Nightmare Dungeons all the way up to 100, push all the way up to maximum pit levels unless those like are just as hard as Avatar of Zero, in which case we'll have to make a pit tier list or something like that. But you can go do your hell tides with this. You can go do your tears of whispers. You can farm everything, uh, you know, uh, do open world bosses, do legion events, etc. This is just builds that are good at doing everything in the game according to the normal structure of end game content. OK, cool. Good. Blood Surge and Infinimus both pop back up into the S tier. Blood Surge should already have been in the S tier for end game. Uh, Bone Spear was already here. And those three builds, I think, are probably going to be like the strongest builds that exist for the Necromancer until we test and see something different. Now, I already hear everybody, Mac, what the hell? Why aren't minions up there? Because we don't know how good minions are going to be. I know we all want them to be super exciting. I do. I super duper do. Every single time they buffed the minions previously and then everybody jumped on the horse and said, like, they're the best thing ever. Oddly enough, they still sucked. It just turned out that Ring of Mendelm was really good and Corpse Explosion was strong. That being said, I do think that minions are absolutely going to be competent and competitive builds. And that's why I've moved them all the way up from C tier to A tier. OK, that's the best I can do for you right now until we see what they look like. Again, Thorns Minions is probably going to be a special variant of Minions. I don't know if this is going to be a variant of pure Minions or if Thorns is just like so ridiculously different, it's going to be its own build guide. Who knows? If it were to be somewhere, it would also be up here in the A tier, probably at the bottom of the options between this and pure Minions. And then in the C tier, we have Bloodlance, who really hasn't lost anything. It's just weaker in comparison to everything else, who at least got some toys. Pure Bloodlance 
just I'm so sad for this build. Honestly, it has too many aspects that all just need to be moved into the skill tree because they tried to fix Bloodlands for your aspects and they did, but then they made too many good aspects and too many good unique items. So now you can't fit them all. What the hell, Blizzard? Fix Bloodlands, please make it actually a good skill. For speed farming, what are we talking about speed farming? We're talking about running like tier 80 nightmare dungeons or running like tier 50 to 100 pit or just running open world through the hell tide or doing tree of whispers. Speed farming doesn't need to be able to one shot uber bosses. It doesn't need to be able to kill Echo of Lilith. What it needs to be able to do is kill super fast and whatever farming strategy you believe is like the best for what you're trying to do. So here, Blood Surge, obviously the best at speed farming, followed very closely by Bone Spear. In the A tier, you have Infinimus, Sever, and Blight. Bone Spirit is also here. Bone Spirit is actually just like wicked fast, not as fast as Bone Spear, until somebody can prove it to me. I just haven't seen video footage that proves it. In all of my testing, it was always very slightly slower. Then in B tier, again, pure minions and shadow minions. I bumped them up one tier here. You might be like, what the hell, why aren't they in A tier? Speed farming can't really wait for minions to walk up and attack stuff when Bone Spare and Blood Surge can both kill the entirety of the screen in whatever direction you're pointing. So people are gonna need to understand that there just is a difference between AoE damage and single target burst damage, and minions are there for single target burst damage, and Bone Spare and Blood Surge are there to blow up everything else. Again, here, Bloodlands drops down to C tier because it didn't gain anything, and it's just not that good at speed farming if we're all just gonna be honest with ourselves here. Then we have leveling. I almost think that the Necromancer should exist in its own leveling tier list of just itself, because it's unfair to compare anything to the Necromancer when it has Corpse Explosion, Minions, and then insert whatever flavor of AoE damage you want here. Blood Surge is like, this is what I had before, but like Blood Surge is like Omega, Mega, 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 S, plus, 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 plus tier. Nothing else even vaguely comes close to this build. It's honestly disgusting. And now that minions are strictly better for it, it just gets to toss those on for free and never have essence issues and have like permanent vulnerability procs if it wants, a huge golem to be able to tank everything and taunt if you want it to. It's absolutely insane. In the A tier, Bone Spear, Sever, and Blight, and here's where Shadow Minions comes up. We do not currently have a pure Minions leveling guide, and we almost certainly are going to create one. Uh, whether or not that's Thorn Minions or just like normally scaling Minions damage, we'll have to see. Again, we'll have to test it in the PTR, because the game's completely different now. And before, pure Minions was like Kek W super bad for leveling. Shadow Minions was still like pretty decent could you do, because you could use Sever to be able to buff your damage output. But... Until we have it, I'm not going to have it here on the tier list. And then you'll notice that Bloodlance is all the way down in Kek W, even worse than D tier, because it is just the most trash build. We don't even have a build guide for it for leveling because you literally shouldn't do it. Can you? Yes. Is it good? Hell no. Uh, so there you go. Those are the tier lists. Do not quote this. Don't share it. Don't post it to Reddit and say, do you agree? I don't even agree with it. This is just like my best guess based off of little to no information and the hubris in attempting to even construct this for you makes me sick to my stomach but for the people who are asking this is like where my intuition is leading me i can be completely wrong i don't take this as god sent i don't take it as gospel but for the people who i knew would be asking for it there you go it's there enjoy it so you made it all the way to the end. Thank you so much for watching this video. Like I said, if you want to look at the individual changes that I think relate to each individual build, as opposed to the TLDR and high level versions of these conversations, go ahead and click to each individual build that you personally like. Here's the list of changes here. If there are nerfs, like on Bloodlance, we have them listed here. Similar to Blood Surge, we have them listed here. But everything at the top is just like buffs or general changes that are probably good for it. You'll notice that I do have a list for Shadow Surfer and Corpse Explosion. If you just want to get an idea Idea of like how I personally think these things will work for those build archetypes when we inevitably get them onto the actual website. But I hope that this helped you to take this insanely massive, like 12,000 word, ridiculous pile of patch notes and turn into a much more concise and like easy to digest version of things that you need to understand for the Necromancer class itself. As always, Thank you so much for watching this video. If you're brand new here and you liked what you saw and you like to listen to me just generally yell at you while I got Excel sheets in the background, 
consider subscribing to the channel. We are finally back on an upswing. The game is good to play and people are excited again. And I'd love for you to always be up to date whenever I put something out. If the Necromancer is something you were looking to jump into this season. Thank you again to everybody who is already a member of the channel. That's absolutely insane. Thank you so much for your generosity. I absolutely do not deserve it. Go ahead and toss a like on this video as well and leave comments down below. Do you agree with me? Do you think anything was wrong here? Did I miss something? Do you have like an Omega Giga Brain concept that like my feeble little intelligence couldn't possibly understand? Roast me in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. This is like the most exciting part of any season for me is when we get the patch notes and we get to start theory crafting. And I'm just so wildly excited to hop into the PTR itself and see how these dominoes all fall into place. Thank you so much for watching this video. I truly hope that it helps. I look forward to seeing you in the next one.